Let's start to look at how we should place those column pads. I'm currently at FF00, which is a finished floor. Okay, the column pads will be placed actually underneath. So you do have two couple of options here. Uh, you can actually go ahead and place your column pads here because, like I said, the column pads will be placed automatically attached to the bottom of the column. Or, okay, what you can do is you can actually go all the way down to um, the zero top of footing minus one foot for inches to place all the columns at that level. Then come back to the top of footing minus eight inches and um, um, place them individually. So I'm still gonna stay here at the finished floor area um, level line. What I'm gonna do is I should go ahead and select isolated footing, okay? And I'm gonna place add grids, okay? Even though you are placing out of grids, but if the system actually, the uh, rabbit actually recognizes there are, there are uh, columns in place, they will automatically attach your column pads underneath the columns. So place, okay, the column um, pads at grid line A first. Okay, reason being for that is I can adjust the actually um, um, elevations. So I click on okay, grid line A and uh, hold your my uh, hold your control key down. And this time you will include all the column grids and I click on finish. And you will receive this message that says none of the created elements are visible because obviously they are underground, so you will not be able to see it. But in 3D view, okay, you actually should be able to see all the column paths placed for you. And um, if you zoom in a little bit, okay, and you see that is actually attached to the bottom of a column. If you're not really sure, what we can do is actually we can go to the annotate and check its uh, spot elevation, okay. As you see, it is indeed minus one foot four inches. However, okay, just a reminder, for the column paths A1 and uh, A12, because uh, because there were no columns in place, so those column paths would not be automatically moved to minus one foot minus one foot four inches. So you have to manually, okay, change the two column paths elevation by selecting them. Hold your control key down again, and it can change its level to the minus one foot four inches. So that way you automatically move them to that desired level. You see the elevation actually changes, updates itself. Okay? So that's the way you place, okay, your um, column pads for grid line A. Some of you may kind of ask you about uh, can we actually place the column pads here in the 3D view? Well, the answer is yes, of course. Um, the only problem is you won't be able to place the column pads for um, the intersections B2 and um, um, B12, okay, because there is nothing in place, okay. So you won't, you also will not be able to place some other column pads where there are actually no columns, but only um, the uh, grid line intersections. So I'll go ahead and go to uh, FF0 again, okay. So my job is actually now going to place those column pads at grid line B. So same methodology, okay. Uh, I go to my structural and choose isolated footing, and I'm still stick with the F5 uh, zero. That is fine actually at this moment. And now I'm actually going to choose add grids again, and I click on B grid line, and uh, hold your control key down, and again choose all 12 grid lines, right? And I click on finish, okay. Same method, uh, same error message show up again, okay. But you can expect that you still have a total of 12, okay. Uh, column pads being placed. Now, double check again, go to your annotation, and go to spot elevation, and uh, make sure that is minus, is actually minus 8 inches because those are internal pads. Now, the tricky part, right? Those two column pads, even though they are at a grid line B, but they're not really considered to be internal column pads, they're actually external column pads. So they're actually going all the way down to the minus one foot four inches. So that's the difference, okay, um, here. Now, for the other, col uh, other column pads, we, if you look at um, plan grid again, okay, so you will find out, okay, we do not have any column pads at the C1 intersection, but all the way, okay, to get here, which are the four columns at grid line C, and they don't have any column pads at grid, on grid line BD as well. So for us, 
what we have left is actually the four column paths here. So you have F4 is 0, F5 is 0, F6 is 0, and F4 is 0. So it looks like F4 is 0 is actually um, the majority. So what are we going to do is, I'm going to just place those four columns here anyway, because I only have column paths here for those four columns. Okay? So I choose my structural isolated footing, and this time we choose F4 is 0. Okay? And I'm going to place at uh, columns. The level you have do you have to set up as, okay, uh, minus eight inches, okay, because they're all internal column pads. And click on add columns, and draw a box, okay, to select all those four columns here, and click on finish. So now you have all the column pads placed, but don't forget your job are your job is not done yet, okay, resume. Uh, you haven't really changed the type of the column paths to their um, desired types. And don't forget, at A1, A12, it's not a single column path. It's actually F40 and F30 is a combination, okay? So you need to change there as well. So for how to change a column path type is as simple as, okay? You can just go ahead, okay? For instance, in this case, I'm looking at F50, okay? On C9, um, Oh, C6, which is literally um, this particular column pass here. So it's supposed to be F60, and now it's F40. All you have to do is click on that uh, column pass and uh, use the type selector to update that to F60. Okay, that's what you have to do. All right, so follow those instructions and uh, go ahead and finish all your column paths. Make sure that they have the right elevation as well as the right um, size of column pads. And that concludes, okay, the second tutorial, how to place column pads in this project. I will see you in the next video.